Cheers. So I want to talk about the M4 MacBook Air that Apple launched um, about a week ago, and I've been sort of using it since. And uh, I truly think this might be one of the best laptops anybody could probably buy in 2025, um, if you're looking for Apple specifically, at least. Now, I personally use my laptops for um, pretty much everything and anything you can think of from unwinding, relaxing, chilling after a long ass day, um, running my entire YouTube channel, um, pretty much anything else I might wanna do, including even a little bit of gaming. Now, the crazy part is typically the word or the name Apple and the word value don't typically mix. But up until, I don't know, recently at least, um, those seem to be going very well in hand, at least with the launch of the M4 Mac Mini, which I did check out, um, I don't know, a couple weeks back. And uh, likewise with this M4 MacBook Air, which sort of came out of nowhere, uh, definitely there's some really good value to be had. <laughs> now, just as with any of my videos, don't expect any crazy benchmarks or anything, because I don't really care to do that. There's a lot of smarter people that do a better job than I would anyway. So uh, I'm gonna talk about this in a super non-technical review, um, sort of how I use this thing in my everyday to day life and my experience with it. I do wanna also give a thanks to Setapp for sponsoring a portion of today's video, but more on them in a bit. Now, I will sort of start by saying that I might be the perfect demographic for this specific MacBook, not just the fact that it's a little bit better than the previous generations, um, but just for everything that I personally do, I might be a little bit biased or it's just that good of a fit. For me, honestly, this thing just ticks so many boxes. As a creator, the new M4 chipset is incredibly powerful, which I definitely appreciate, but it's also not just that, it's particularly the fact that uh, Apple went ahead and doubled the base amount of RAM that you get with a machine like this. So where I would previously have issues while editing my uh, projects or even trying to get some gaming in, um, there was always some sort of RAM issue with uh, the base model versions. So yeah, that is an absolutely gargantuan upgrade. And the fact that, again, coming back to the value aspect, they actually lowered the price of this machine, which is kind of bonkers. Now, the second thing that's um, a little bit more personal, of course, is, uh, you know, as a dad, I don't really particularly have a huge ton of time to spare and I wanna be present with my family at all times. And, you know, when deadlines call, when work calls, you still gotta get stuff done. So this thin and light MacBook Air is that machine for me whenever I actually do have to get some work done, but still need to be or want to be present with my family. Absolutely awesome in that front. And this is going to be the happy medium for me on that. And lastly, for me, again, as somebody who still likes to use a flip phone in um, 2025, um, this machine helps keep me connected to the world when I don't really want to be connected. But yeah, it does that job. Now, realistically, just to not bullshit you guys, the M2, M1 even, and the M3 MacBook Airs are probably gonna be perfectly fine for anybody who's say, you know, a student just doing assignments and what have you, browsing the web. But for anybody at all who um, has any sort of heavier workload, anything creative perhaps, um, or the random person who, you know, actually does wanna throw down some gaming on here once in a while, this really is a massive upgrade from even the last generation, I personally find. Personally, creatively, I love making videos so incredibly much. Um, and this machine, this thin sheet of glass and metal just simply does it all, which I really do appreciate. And again, while not absolutely specific to um, this machine, just the general greatness of macOS, uh, I still just wanna mention, I absolutely love macOS, particularly the continuity between you know iMessage and FaceTime. Um, and plus, because you know I don't have social media on my flip phone, I love using this machine just to catch up on my socials. Um, anytime I post vertical content, I do it through a computer or a tablet, and that sort of just helps keep me connected, which I really do like. Uh, I just don't find it as uh, addicting as doom scrolling on, on you know my iPhone when I would typically have that, and it gets the job done, and I really do dig it. Now, I'm gonna talk about how I edit all my videos and um, also some gaming on this M4 MacBook Air, but first, I do wanna give a huge thanks to Setapp for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Now, if you haven't heard of Setapp before, it's pretty much an all-in-one place where you can find dozens of truly good apps for your Mac 
all under one convenient subscription. There are actually a ton of apps to choose from as well, so you could always have fun just browsing through the setup application to see what actually suits your workflow, or you can always take a look at their curated workflow packages, which do have different things depending on if you're a creator, somebody who's working with AI, a developer, a coder, whatever else, there's gonna be an option for you. Now, personally, I've been using a good chunk of apps, even going back to when I had reviewed my M4 Mac Mini. Uh, those first three that I absolutely loved were iStats, Bartender, as well as ClearVPN, which gives me all the shows that I could watch up here in Canada because Netflix doesn't have everything. Um, but there are a couple new apps that I've been really enjoying over this last past week, the first of which is something called Notchnook. Notchnook for me personally is a good one to have because it allows me to control things like music or check my calendar at a glance, which is something super useful, whereas the Notch would otherwise be doing nothing. So yeah, definitely a good one to check out. Another app that I really dig is something called Vivid, and I don't know how they do it, but it does allow your monitors to actually go beyond its maximum brightness. So definitely a good app to have if you do need that increased brightness. And the last one you've probably heard of is Clean My Mac, which pretty much allows you to scrub your computer of any sort of useless apps or files, which is probably something you might want if you do have the base model Mac, because they typically only come with 256 gigs of storage. Now, if you do want to check out SetApp, I will have a QR code here for you to scan, or you can check the link down below in the video description. Right now, SetApp does have their one week trial extended to 30 days. So you can always check this out to see if you like it, and I really think you will. Thanks again to SetApp for sponsoring this portion of today's video. But to talk about gaming on a Mac, uh, it's come a long way. And of course, you're not buying a Mac specifically for gaming unless you're, you know, a developer or something. But every year, it seems to be inching ever so closer to actually being able to game pretty decently, even on the base model Macs. Naturally, of course, there's going to be, you know, the native games you might be able to get, like um, Baldur's Gate 3 is one of my favorite games of all time. And throwing this up on uh, the base model Mac, I'm getting, you know, 45 FPS on low settings, of course. Um, if a lot of people are okay with that, it's pretty decent, depending on what you consider decent. Um, I really dig it, especially if you're on the go. And again, that performs at full battery. And I need somebody to talk me off the ledge when it comes down to World of Warcraft, because I haven't played in about four years, and I've been getting that itch. Tell me not to do it. I don't want to do it, but I want to do it. But yeah, I didn't actually play World of Warcraft on here yet, but apparently, again, another native game that works incredibly well, plus all the others that seem to be getting added to the list year over year. I'm pretty pumped to play Cyberpunk on here when that launches. Of course, if we're talking about addictions, my Bellatro addiction has developed, and I absolutely love that. That's available on Apple Arcade, far from demanding, mind you. That game is really not demanding at all, but it is available on you know Apple Arcade. That game is really fun to play. Um, just another game, if you want to ever try that on the Mac, you can throw down a couple hours and forget about the time. It's just one of those. But apart from native gaming, of course, there's the whole crossover thing. If you're okay using crossover, it allows you to play certain Windows games on here, which uh, I find pretty badass. So there's a couple titles that they you know, suggest right off the bat, like the Diablos and Cyberpunk and stuff. If you really want to throw that down, CSGO something people like to play on uh, crossover. And I'm gonna be looking into exploring that quite a bit myself personally, but that is a great option for um, if you're going to be using crossover. If any of you have ever been interested in Mac gaming, there's, um, you know, Andrew's channel. I'll have his link down below. He always goes deep into uh, Mac gaming. So I'll leave his channel below if you do wanna check that out to see what sort of games uh, you can probably run on crossover or parallels or whatever else. He does a great job at showcasing that. But the Mac actually is getting to the point where it's, good at gaming or maybe decent i don't know what word you want to use whichever or depends on what you consider decent again like i said it might be a little bit cheating and i've mentioned this with my m4 mac mini review but game pass exists and it performs way better than i uh, used to experience when using it and despite it you know not actually being on the mac itself the mac is just streaming the games from xbox game pass um, it's still a great fun way to get gaming in and of course, because Game Pass is Game Pass, it opens up a huge amount of games for you to play on your Mac. So whether you know you just need a couple minutes to get a good game in or you're just a casual gamer, <laughs> it's always one of those things that's fun to play on here. And honestly, it's an easy way to lose a couple hours. Um, for myself particularly, I love gaming. It's the, my favorite way to decompress after a long day. And if the Mac can do it for me, I'm all for it. And the fact is, again, this is the base model M4 Air. Um, of course, all the other Macs are probably gonna do even better, but admirable nonetheless. <laughs> the only downside I find honestly is the base model only has 256 gigs of storage. And I only just recently found this out, but you can install games on an external drive and use it flipping normally. And I don't know why I just found that. So I have this SSD, it's like a jerry-rigged SSD enclosure where I have like an elastic over it so it doesn't fall out. But this is an external SSD. It's fast as boy and um, all my games are installed on here, actually. So whenever I want a game, I just plug this in. Um, I would have to take this with me, I guess, technically, but 
if I'm at my desk set up or if I do take it with me, it's small as hell. And I can just get my gaming done on there, whether that be, you know, Baldur's Gate or some of my other native indie games. Works super, super well. Now, outside of gaming, as for what's on my M4 MacBook Air, I edit all my projects in Final Cut Pro, really dig Final Cut Pro. And I will say this thing absolutely shreds through 4K timelines. And um, it sounds like a bit of a broken record, but on my M4 Mac Mini, when I reviewed that uh, a couple weeks back, um, I spoke about how impressive it was, mainly because I, I recently started shooting in 6.2K OpenGate, which doesn't sound a whole lot more than 4K. But when you actually math out the pixels on there, and this is again repeating from that video, 6.2K OpenGate is about th over three times the amount of pixels on 4K. And the fact that obviously this shreds through 4K timelines, but the fact that it's usable on my uh, 6.2K, multiple layers of 6.2K footage is insane for the base model of a MacBook Air. So I'm gonna talk more about that, but yeah, that is kind of bonkers for a base model machine. For me at least, because like I mentioned, I don't have a lot of time between my work and family commitments and stuff. Um, shooting OpenGate lets me get uh, footage for both my vertical and horizontal content at the same time, which is why it's so demanding on a machine. But I do appreciate that this um, does a great job at using that footage. Now getting back to my editing workflow, I'll talk about some of the things I don't particularly like about this machine. Um, as well, again, I mentioned the storage is one. Again, you're gonna, probably gonna want an external SSD of some sort, especially if you're working on some larger projects. But mine typically range between 10 and 20 minutes. I will say after, you know, the 12 minute mark when I'm working on a project, uh, I will start getting some dropped frames. Again, this is with two layers of like 6.2K footage. So that is very hefty. Again, this base model M4 Air will handle that workflow, but it will start dropping frames and slowing down quite a bit. So yeah, again, I might want to consider something like a MacBook Pro or a Mac Studio for myself if I plan to continue that workflow, which I probably will realistically. But again, if I wasn't doing 6.2K footage, this thing is absolutely bonkers. Still, it performs well enough whenever I'm doing any sort of color grading or adding any sort of effects, which I typically like to add at the end of my project, just so I'm not slowing down the machine all too much while cutting and editing. And the thing here as well is I will say I'm absolutely no professional when it comes down to my creative workflow. And there are current professionals that still use an M1 Pro chipset or an M2 Pro chipset. And if they can use that and still be okay, and the fact that the M4 chipset is better than the M1 Pro and the M2 Pro, that's absolutely flipping incredible. So yeah, kudos to Apple for the M4 chip. It actually is super badass. Now, as for the build and design of this MacBook, it's easy to say it's straight up beautiful, as light and thin as it is. I've personally always been a little infatuated with smaller tech, whether that be, you know, my iPhone 13 mini or my iPad mini seven or iPad mini six. I love smaller tech. And the 13 inch MacBook Air is definitely falling into that category of smaller tech. I just honestly love when small tech seems to punch well above its weight. Now for once I didn't go with black or space gray or whatever, I did end up going for this lighter color, which is the sky blue. And it's honestly kind of barely blue, if anything, it kind of depends on the lighting that you have. Um, it really leans closer to silver, but I'm okay with it. This is my first time in a long time having a lighter MacBook, so I kind of appreciate it, and it looks pretty good. Because of its design, size, and weight, and all that, it's sort of the machine you kind of want to take with you anywhere you go, and you can do that, so yeah, definitely appreciate that. And of course, there's all the other stuff when it comes down to the build quality, like the keyboard is flipping incredible. Touch ID is useful as it could ever be. I love Touch ID. And the trackpad, again, there's nothing else on the market I find that's gonna be better than a MacBook trackpad, so I really do dig that. And again, performance wise, you're getting that entire performance I talked about before, all while well portable on battery if you want to. So love that. Now talking about, you know, the media side of this machine, um, I've mentioned before, if you've seen any of my recent videos, I'm really trying to uh, slow down, which is my 2025 resolution. And that means a lot of consuming media because uh, that helps me sort of decompress as well, apart from gaming. But yeah, I have been putting a great amount of time on this um, from the media standpoint. For me, I'm just trying to find a better work-life balance, which has always sort of been a bit of a challenge of mine. Right now, show-wise, I'm still working on The Ones Who Live. I'm coming up on the last episode. Um, it's actually surprisingly a pretty decent show. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it was gonna be a throwaway, but it's pretty decent. And I'm gonna be jumping to Invincible next. Well, apparently that's really good. But what I really want is for you guys to recommend me a show that I can truly get lost in. I want something 10 out of 10 that I have to watch the next episode for. You're already up late past your bedtime, but you gotta watch another episode. Give me a show like that, please. <laughs> but yeah, this laptop has been great when it comes down to any sort of media. The display is awesome. It gets super bright. Uh, I don't really care about the notch, if I even have to mention that. The speakers are excellent considering the size of this laptop. So yeah, for an all-in-one productivity media monster package, excellent. Likewise, I've said this before on my M4 Mac Mini review, but um, recently I got into IEMs, um, in-ear monitors. 
it's funny because, you know, I am a skank for my um, AirPods and I've been using AirPods like crazy nonstop for years. And it's easy to forget just how good media sounds when you actually plug in and the, um, uh, the headphone, the headphone jack on the M4 Air and the M4 Mac Mini is a high impedance headphone jack. So it works really, really well with um, uh, IEMs and the built-in DAC is excellent, uh, which goes perfectly well with Apple's lossless and Apple Music. So yeah, if you forgot what it sounds like to plug in a pair of headphones to listen to music, give that a try. You might be surprised on how much better it is than wireless. But yeah, in terms of the value standpoint of this MacBook, it really is hard to beat across the board. As for what you're getting, this just simply does it all and it's a chill ass powerhouse. Honestly, price wise, I think the pricing is fair on here. Again, they dropped the price, which is pretty sweet. The only other thing I'd say is if you don't need portability at all, consider the M4 Mac mini because that's going to be uh, similar, but even cheaper. But yeah, between the M4 chipset and the double the RAM at 16 gigs, it's hard not to love this thing and I sort of sound like a fanboy and I think that's okay. I will say for me, at least over the last three and a half months, I've never been more productive and a machine like this definitely helps out in that front. Honestly, it comes down to letting myself get refreshed and relax more and having more meaningful productivity periods without really burning out too quick. I will say as well, since this is a laptop, it does allow me to move around which is one thing I always did back in college. If I was feeling a little bit, you know, stuck on whatever I'm working on, I just pick up my laptop or my work at the time and just move to a different spot. And that's something that I still appreciate with a laptop like this. And again, the full performance comes with you, which is always a badass thing. Now, sort of related, but unrelated to the Mac is sort of why I've been more productive as well recently. And of course, a lot of it comes down to, you know, pieces of tech like the MacBook or the M4 mini, whatever. Um, but some of it comes down to a, a bit of a lifestyle change I've personally had lately. And of course, it does still go back to my 2025 resolution of slowing down and relaxing and really just not working myself into an oblivion. Imagine common sense being common sense. I don't know why it took me so long to figure this out, but honestly, as of March, at least, I've been just going to bed earlier and waking up earlier, as simple as that sounds. Now, what this does for me, at least, is I sort of get a life before work. What I really have are the same amount of hours in the day, but I'm just moving two hours from the evening to the morning, which again, just sort of lets me have a life before my day job. I don't know, I wasn't really expecting it, but it puts me in a great headspace. And even right now, it's actually 6.30 in the morning and my family is still asleep and I'm working on this YouTube video because I literally want to and I'm well rested and it's just something that I actually started loving. And the thing is I could do whatever I want. I can exercise, I can journal, I can play video games. I can, again, work on a YouTube video all before going into my day job, which I wasn't expecting to love as much as I do. And I find that definitely leads into less resentment toward a, towards whatever I have to work on. And I'm just more rested, more willing and happier to do whatever it is I have to do. And of course, with that comes a huge level of productivity. And I can't believe I'm one of those wake up early assholes. That sounds like a pretentious douchebag, but I guess that's the reality and I wasn't particularly expecting it. I think those cold plunge nerds are onto something. <laughs> Getting back to the tech side of things, there's certain pieces of tech that aren't inherently good. For me, at least, you know, I've had, you know, I've had screen time issues in the past and right now having, you know, a flip phone and a dope ass MacBook and perhaps my iPad mini is everything that I would really need. And um, the star of the show for me today, at least, is the M4 MacBook Air because Again, it does every flipping thing I needed to do. Anyways, that's my key to productivity. Dope tech and going to bed early. Imagine that. 